Using the James Webb Telescope, astronomers found four of the oldest galaxies in the universe. These galaxies are making stars faster than was thought possible before. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today we'll tell you about the Big Bang is really over and the universe discovered by James Webb. Let's get started. Astronomers just recently used the James Webb Telescope JWST, to find the four most faraway galaxies that have ever been seen. A little more than 13 billion light years separate Earth from these galaxies. According to two new studies that came out on April 4th in the journal Nature Astronomy, this means that scientists are seeing how galaxies looked 300 to 500 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was only about 14 billion years old. Professor of Astronomy at Yale University Peter Van Dokum, who was not involved in the research but wrote about it in Nature Astronomy, said that the frontier is moving almost every month. There are only 300 million years between these galaxies and the Big Bang that we don't know about, Van Dokum said. This may sound like news you've already heard, since JWST has been used in multiple studies that may have found even older galaxies in the last few months. Because of these studies, this news may sound like something you already know. The four galaxies that were just found are special, though, because scientists know for sure that they are old galaxies and not some other type of celestial object or galaxy that's closer to Earth, but pretending to be the one that's farther away. When figuring out the redshift of nearby galaxies, astronomers usually use color. Redshift is a unit of distance that uses the fact that light waves get longer and redder as they move through a universe that's expanding. But when exploring completely new regions, like the ones JWST is doing, this method is a riskier bet. In what Van Dokum calls a technical tour de force, the writers of the new study used detailed measurements of the galaxy's spectra, or the range of light they give off at different frequencies, to double-check the accuracy of the redshifts. During the age of reionization, when scientists think the first stars were made, these four galaxies are around. After making sure how old the galaxies were, the scientists counted their stars and found that compared to our Milky Way, they were pretty small. But the galaxies were also making stars quickly, which was surprising so early in the universe, said Stéphane Charlot, a researcher at the Astrophysics Institute in Paris and co-author of the study. Researchers say that the galaxies don't seem to have any parts that are particularly complicated. This suggests that their stars haven't had time to make stronger elements yet, and are still made of the hydrogen and helium atoms from the early universe. You might be wondering why we want to see the first stars and galaxies form. After the Big Bang, the first stars to form made the chemicals that make up life. Because of them, we're here today, and we want to know what happened. We have ideas and predictions, but we don't know what will happen. The first stars must have had an effect on our past in some way. For example, they must have stirred everything up and made the chemical elements other than hydrogen and helium. So if we really want to know where our atoms came from and how the small world Earth became able to support life, we must first measure what happened in the beginning. James Webb Even though photos of new galaxies have been found, most people still don't think that the Big Bang is over. According to Space.com says that there's more proof to back up the Big Bang theory. Researchers have looked more closely at the data and found that the faraway galaxies seen by the James Webb Telescope are, in fact, consistent with what we know about astronomy right now. The problem isn't that there are galaxies far away. In fact, the modern version of the Big Bang Theory, called CDM Cosmology, where it denotes dark energy and cold dark matter stands for cold dark matter, predicts that galaxies will appear in the very young universe. That's because billions of years ago, there were neither galaxies nor stars. When our world was much smaller and denser than it is now, everything was much more the same. There were only differences in density here and there, but as time went on, the differences in density grew because the slightly denser spots grew more material to them. Over hundreds of millions of years, tiny pockets grew into the first stars, which led to the formation of the first galaxies. In fact, the fact that galaxies were already there in the very early universe is evidence for the Big Bang Theory, not evidence against it. So what's the problem? The strain seemed to come from how much the galaxies were thought to weigh. Several of them were much heavier than 1,010 solar masses. Still, that's a lot smaller than the Milky Way, but in terms of how big they were back then, they're huge. Researchers who found these galaxies say that their huge sizes go against several ideas about how galaxies form and change over time. The researchers said that in the worst case, no galaxy formation situation within the CDM framework could make such big galaxies so quickly, but their claims depended on how well they could estimate how far away those galaxies were. 
which is a very hard thing to do at such great distances. The researchers used a method called photometric redshift to figure out how far away the record-breaking galaxies were. This method involves fitting a galaxy's rough light spectrum to a model to figure out how far away it is. This method is extremely unreliable because simple things like more dust around galaxies can make them look farther away than they really are. A new group of scientists used Webb to find galaxies using spectroscopic redshift, a much more accurate and reliable way to measure distance to find out if the Big Bang is in danger. This method looks for the spectral lines of known elements that galaxies create and uses them to figure out the redshift and, by extension, how far away the galaxies are. Using this more accurate method, the scientists found a sample of four galaxies. All of these galaxies were just as far away as the ones that had already been found, but their distances were proven and could be relied on. These galaxies, on the other hand, weighed between 108 and 109 solar masses, which is a lot less. So the question came up, does CDM allow for these small galaxies to exist at such an early time in the past of the universe, or does the tension still exist? Putting together galaxies is a hard thing to do. Within the CDM model, cosmologists can use pen and paper math to map out the history and development of the universe as a whole. However, galaxy formation is a complicated process that involves many different types of physics, such as gravity, star formation, and supernova explosions, dust distribution, cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and more. For all of these interactions to be taken into account, scientists need to use supercomputer simulations that start with the universe as it was billions of years ago and use physics to create fake galaxies. This is the only way to connect what we see in the real world, galaxies, to the basic factors of the CDM model, like the amount of normal and dark matter in the universe. Researchers were able to try out different methods by using simulations. If there were no models that could make galaxies with that much mass at that age, CDM would be lost. Lucky for us, there were no problems like that. In their study report, which was published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters and is available as a draft on Archive, the scientists said that the formation of galaxies with 108 solar masses in the early universe was not a problem for CDM. As usual, this is not the end of the story. Astronomers might find out how far away a very large galaxy was in the early universe. This would make us rethink what we know about how galaxies form and maybe even the CDM cosmic model. In science, it's important to keep an open mind. But the big claims that were made about the early web findings aren't a reason to worry just yet. Hopefully, we'll see many more discoveries that'll clear out who's right. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.